Hello, everyone. Welcome to AFC Under the Microscope COVID-19. I am Shilpa Arora, Anti-Money Laundering Director at ACAMS. I have the pleasure and privilege of talking to industry leaders on how the fight against financial crime has had to adapt in light of COVID-19 restrictions. I am with Neil Giles today, and we will be talking to him about human trafficking. Neil is a director at Stop the Traffic, a center for intelligence-led prevention, and the CEO of Traffic Analysis Hub. Neil has an extensive knowledge of organized crime and human trafficking, and a rich background in law enforcement uh, with his work with Scotland Yard. Neil, my first question to you is, what has changed in trafficking as a result of COVID-19? Well, a number of work streams have shifted quite quickly, Shilpa. Uh, I, I think everybody will notice changes on their high street. The nail bars aren't operating. Um, the car washes have gone. Um, and, and a lot of very obvious changes. Construction work has ceased uh, pretty much across the piece. Uh, so opportunities that were uh, running very comfortably for traffickers have begun to disappear but at the same time, new opportunities have opened up. Um, and they're agile businesses, and they will begin to pursue new opportunities very quickly. Uh, and we think those new opportunities are emerging, particularly in food production, packaging, transportation, logistics more broadly, because we're all much more reliant on delivery mechanisms in, in this current environment. So key questions for us, I think, at the moment are, what's happening to those that were involved in the sex industry because that kind of contact isn't working anymore? Where are, where are the, the, the guys and girls that were working in nail bars being, being utilized now and are they being exploited? Um, and, and how can we as, as, as a broad industry spot the changes in financial flows, but also spot the needs to keep up our efforts on KYC and due diligence work. Excellent. So our pandemic could prove to be a um, double blow for modern slaves in Britain. So those showing symptoms perhaps might be unlikely to stop working or seek help. And um, other victims may be driven into further debt bondage in this current circumstances. Can you help us understand the, the impacts of these restrictions on the victims themselves? For sure. Um, there'll, be, there'll be a range of people that were in circumstances of modern slavery, human trafficking in the UK that have probably found themselves pretty much abandoned without a safety net. Um, literally heading for the street in some circumstances. Um, those, those in sex work will probably find themselves subject to increased levels of abuse um, and, uh, and, and other um, violence potentially from within their own yeah, networks uh, because those, uh, those financial streams that their exploiters require um, are no longer there. Uh, and suddenly uh, they've picked up a financial burden with no income and they're very, they'll be very uncomfortable with that. The potential outcome of this is that you'll see people on the street um, without a safety net, uh, which is going to bring a whole pile of, of, of new requirements on government, both national and local, and not-for-profit resources, all of which are strained currently. And as far as financial industry is concerned, a whole new crop potentially of, of vulnerable customers to consider for the future. And are there any new typologies that have surfaced since the outbreak of COVID-19? Or have you seen any financial patterns, for example, that particularly uh, our members from financial institutions should, should know about? I think what we will be seeing and what, what will have already have started to happen is an increased repatriation of funds to those global hotspots for trafficking recruitment. We do know that many of the trafficking groups that operate effectively in the UK have very strong links to their recruitment zones um, in Eastern Europe and in the Baltic states, uh, in the Far East in terms of Southern China and Vietnam, uh, and in the Indian subcontinent. Uh, and we, we believe that there'll be increased throughput of, uh, of funds to those locations. And we're seeing some traffickers head back home to be with family during the course of this pandemic. 
Uh, so, so there's quite a lot happening at the moment, and those patterns will be will be obvious in banking systems. Thank you. So in terms of crises such as these, there is a chance or an opportunity for counterfeit goods to come into the market. We've already heard about hand sanitizers as counterfeit goods. Do you think the production of counterfeit goods will see a further increase? And also perhaps you could explain to our viewers the link between trafficking and uh, counterfeiting. Sure. Um, there's, there's strong evidence that counterfeiting of branded goods uh, as, as an industry in its own right has long drawn on trafficked individuals. It's a great way of hiding a workforce. It doesn't matter if that's illicit tobacco growing or, or manufacture of, of, of counterfeit cigarettes, uh, alcohol um, and, and other branded goods. Um, the current crisis with shortages in protective equipment, um, hand sanitizer, I suspect even alcohol production uh, and, and the making or, or rebadging of fake wine, uh, a lot of this activity is, is an opportunity for traffickers to move people who are idle hands. So maybe those five or six people that work in that nail bar are now working in a couple of sheds somewhere producing hand sanitizer mm -hmm. that isn't going to sanitize anything. Um, uh, but, but those markets spring up and become very vibrant in times like this. And as I've, I've already said, traffickers are agile businesses. Um, and, and, and the financial patterns that follow that agility will be obvious. We need to identify it fast and circulate it as quickly as we can amongst your membership and amongst those, those banks and businesses that can do something about this. Thank you. And in terms of a technological innovation in this space, can you help us understand how uh, technological innovation can help in the fight against human trafficking? Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the Traffic Analysis Hub as well. Sure. Um, we've, our, our research has, has established that you can do a surprising amount uh, to ameliorate the issue of trafficking through good communications. So being able to communicate with, um, with people who are in exploitation, most of whom have got some access to internet. This is a, this is a process of deception in terms of recruitment for 99% of, of all of those people in exploitation, and, and then a move into creeping debt bondage. Um, uh, and most folk will still um, have access to the internet and, and, and get messages and the key to success is being able to inform them particularly of, of their rights in a country like ours. You know, we're at minimum wage is well known in this country, um, but it's not well known amongst exploited communities. Um, so just getting a simple message out to people so that they actually know what their rights are and, and who they could approach to talk to that would understand their community background. So it needs to be geographically real and there are lots of ways of doing that and Stop the Traffic have perfected that in recent times with, with great cooperation with social media companies. Facebook and Instagram, often not our favourite, have been brilliant supporters of this work over the last couple of years um, and, and, and they're in, in unstinting in their support of, of our activity and learning with us. And so that, that's a strong suit. But what needs to go alongside that is a strong understanding of what the hotspots and characteristics of trafficking are and being, being able to make that available to every actor who could draw on that effectively. That's where Traffic Analysis Hub uh, comes onto the scene. It's now a separate not-for-profit enterprise alongside Stop the Traffic. It's a cross-sector initiative um, uh, of truly revolutionary um, style. Um, it's beginning to draw support from major financial institutions, from law enforcement, Interpol are now a member, um, and lots of not-for-profits uh, and, and other entities and businesses um, that believe by sharing their understanding of trafficking into a common safe space provided by IBM, good technology, good security, um, it, it enables them to access a tailored uh, analysis to their own requirement. 
it, it's currently free to use. There will be a subscription later this year for, for those that join. Um, but as a not-for-profit, it simply needs to cover, it, cover its costs. It will be the cheapest access to information that any of your members have ever managed to acquire. <laughs> Um, but, but it truly is the future, um, cross-sector sharing of an understanding of a problem in a way that enables everybody to get more from the system than they put in and to be more effective in all of their business processes. Thank you. My, my penultimate question before we move on to the final question. So as ordinary citizens, as concerned citizens, what can we do to help? I recall um, listening to you in a road show last summer where you talked about this example of a car wash and you said pay attention to whether people are wearing boots, overalls and you know, pay attention to what you're paying at the car wash. And I can't personally go past a car wash without actually really thinking about it even now. So what is it we ordinary concerned citizens can do to help? Um, I, I think concerned citizens have an obligation to know more about what trafficking looks like in their own context. And, and the Stop the Traffic website is a great place to start that conversation. There is so much information there in terms of what trafficking looks like in a, in a community context. Um, uh, as you've pointed out, car washes have disappeared right now, but they will be back. Um, and, and the economics of a car wash essentially are, if, if you pay your rent and, and pay what you need to to the water companies uh, and look after your staff properly with minimum wage and protective equipment, the minimum you can charge per car wash is seven pounds. Um, I know lots of car washes around the country don't charge that. Um, it, it's the first sign that something's not quite right. Um, and essentially all of our work is designed to give the public in the broad but professionals more deeply the confidence to see what is in front of them and escalate the right activity for further conversations within their own organization or externally um, so sometimes that might mean calling the police uh, the national slavery hotline um, uploading a, a, an image and a story to the stop the traffic stop app which is available online all of these are tools to raise concerns to people who can do something about that or at the very least aggregate what you're saying with other information and making a stronger a stronger story of it that can subsequently be shared um, so no more do more Thank you, Neil. And final question. Any key takeaways for our members and viewers from you? Um, just be aware that trafficking is just about money and that money passes through financial systems every single day. And there are patterns. Um, generally, expert working group on expert working group on human trafficking is beginning to publish more and more helpful information arising from uh, our joint stronger understanding of trafficking um, please be engaged with that and have the confidence to escalate what clearly is wrong um, to authorities either within your entity or, or without um, looking at SARS etc um, have the confidence to flag up what looks wrong because sometimes it will be and I'd rather you flagged up something that subsequently turned out to be okay um, uh, than, than not do it. Um, if I just reflect very briefly on that case in the Midlands last summer that came to fruition with the Polish traffickers, time and time again when bank staff were spoken to about accounts that were opened by victims and by traffickers the, uh, the bank star said, do you know, I thought something wasn't quite right with that, mm -hmm. but it didn't get escalated for a conversation with managers or, or, or financial crime staff within the bank. And I'd really like that to happen more often. Thank you very much, Neil. A very somber discussion there with Neil Giles from Stop the Traffic about how human trafficking has changed in the light of COVID-19. Do join us as we talk to industry leaders around the globe on financial crime prevention in the current circumstances. You can find us under hashtag online with ACAMS and we look forward to more uh, such interviews with industry leaders. Thank you very much.